Hello everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from Sam for more. It's Leo speaking. Today I'm going to show you how to use the sample and hold node inside Odalus. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. Okay, so I started a new patch. So we go on the synth category and we click drag and drop the sample and hold node. Double click to zoom it in. So how does it work? You have an input where you have your signal, for example, it could be a waveform, a sine waveform. Then you have an output. If you don't have anything on the trigger, you don't have any output. As soon as you send a gate or a signal to the trigger, the node will sample at that moment in time the value that comes from the input and hold that on the output, okay? And that can be really useful, for example, on LFO or create some interesting texture in uh, audio synth. Okay, so let's put that into practice. So let's create a sine wave and um, waveform. And um, if you've seen the previous tutorials, you know how to do it. So phaser node here. Then we go to the math category, an expression node for the frequency, and then an expression node to work out the uh, sine wave. So let's configure those. So we connect the input here for the frequency. We go to the inspector, we define the frequency as one, quite low to start with, so that we can see the waveform into a waveform node. We go to the second expression, and we define these as the sine of x as the input. We make the necessary connection to the phaser. Right, we want to see that waveform, so we go to meter, and we drag and drop the waveform node, like so, and we make the connection. And we can see the sine waveform now on the screen. Okay, so let's take that uh, output from the expression where you have the sine waveform and we just connect it to the input of the sample and hold node. Then what we are going also to do is to drag and drop another waveform node and connect that to the output of the sample and hold node. At the moment, you don't see anything on this waveform node. As I said, you need to give a trigger signal on the sample and hold node to actually uh, sample the value that you are having that input when you send the trigger and then to hold that um, um, on the output. So let's go to the module uh, category. Let's drag and drop a toggle node and let's connect that to the trigger. It's very simple. It's a node where you can, when you click on it, you actually create that signal and then you have to turn it off and then click again to toggle it. So let's say that I toggle it when the waveform is up um, in terms of value, something like that. You can see this if they're sampled and it's holding this value. Let's turn it off in terms of toggle and then try again when the waveform is on the lower point like that. And you can see it's sampling and holding that value when the waveform, in this case, the sine waveform is a lower level. So now let's see if we can make this more interesting or let's see if we can... Uh, in a way, automate the toggling. So let's select the toggle node and um, remove that. Next, let's create a kind of counter. So let's go to the synth module and let's drag the, the um, phaser again. So what I want is a series of signals like a square form or a, or a, pul or a pulse form going into the trigger input um, of the sample and hold node. So how do I do that? Well, we have seen that in a previous tutorial. Go to math and drag an expression for the frequency here. Again, let's say for the for the for now the frequency we set it to uh, one again, but we'll have to change that in a moment. Then we another expression and node, and let's select only that and change that to the input greater than the constant pi which means it will generate some pulses. And again, I, if you don't know how this works, I um, recommend you go back to some of the tutorials where I explained how to use the phaser node. Indeed, now let's go to the meter. Let's drag and drop again another waveform node. And let's check the output of that is coming out from these, uh, this combination here. You can see it's pulses. Now, I can redirect these to the trigger 
of the sample and hold, right? And then what I can also do or start to do is now to increase the frequency of that expression node. I'm going to move it a little bit closer here so I can see the waveform, right? And I'm going to drag these to the left so that when I have this selecting, I can have the inspector on the right hand side. So let's change the value to, you can see it's starting to move. And the reason you don't see a sine wave yet, because it, it is practically sending pulses uh, twice a second at a frequency of two hertz here, because re remember, it's going into this phaser in terms of hertz. And um, it's triggering twice a, a second to take a sample from this waveform. Now let's increase that to, for example, doubling four. And you can see it's starting to look like a waveform because it's simply more uh, more frequently. And let's double that again. You can see, uh, getting closer and closer to a waveform, 16 or 32. And in this case, it's almost like the waveform you see up here. You can go to 64 and it looks like practically what you have up here. Again, if you want to make it even more interesting, what you can do, you can further automate this input here of the 64, right? So what you will do is um, you will, again, select that node, delete that, go to the synth category, uh, drag, um, oops, I haven't deleted that, let's delete it, and drag a phaser here. Then what you would do, you would put an expression node for the frequency again, uh, for the phaser and an expression node to change the output of the phaser because you remember it goes from zero to two pi. So select this expression node and um, go to the inspector. Uh, let's select it. There you go. And we take the output from the phaser. We divide it by two times pi, which will give you a value from zero to one. And then we multiply that by 64. Okay, we make the necessary connection like so. And then um, we establish the frequency of change here, and we put it very low to start with, something like 0 0.05 hertz, and we connect it to that phaser. So let's drag and drop this to make it closer, and let's see um, what's happening here. And you can see the changes here, slowly. It's getting better and better into a sine waveform. And then when it reaches the value 64, it will start again. And you can see it's simply, again, a very low frequency. Then it's increasing the frequency again. So when you look at, at the outset, what we have done here, we have created the sound wave here. Um, so that we use the phaser here to create this sound waveform. Then we use that as an input of the sample and hold. And here we are looking at the output of the sample and hold. Then what we have done, we have created um, here a pulse um, to trigger the sample and a hold. And then we have created, again, using the phaser um, um, here, we have created uh, um, a counter practically from 1 to 64 to change the frequency into this uh, pulse generator, which is being created with the phaser node. Okay, I hope you enjoyed. Actually, by the way, before I close, I want to um, show you that if you add a output node and you connect it here to the uh, sample and hold node, you can hear the increasing as uh, the sample in as the frequency of sampling and holding increases, it becomes more and more a square wave. Of course, at the moment, we are uh, playing at um, a frequency here, which is very low. So um, if you select the expression node, it's um, uh, is quite um, low as, um, as a frequency. So uh, just bear that in mind. But you can create some uh, um, very interesting... Um, oops. Um, Let's put these to one. Okay, there we go. And let's try again.
You could increase the frequency up here, but then as you go higher in frequency for that sine wave, you you may have to actually change how the phaser here works and the triggering to to make sense. But you can try, for example, eight. And so on and so forth. Okay, I hope you enjoyed and found this tutorial useful. And as always, see you next time. Bye.